got my new graphics card for my 1660 Super to do video editing on my computer because when I do Premiere Pro, hardware encoding is what helps to export a video a lot faster. But what I didn't know is by plugging that into the motherboard on the Acer Aspire, it disables the Intel integrated graphics, which are an important part of the hardware encoding for Premiere Pro. So now when I go to export a video, I no longer have the option to do hardware encoding um, because the onboard graphics are disabled. So I think that's a motherboard issue. I've gone into the BIOS and tried to enable that onboard graphics again, but I can't figure out how to do it. It won't allow me to toggle it on and off. So I think I need to either update my motherboard or just get a new motherboard. And I think I'm going to opt for the second because that seems a lot simpler. And that's going to help with the video editing, which is kind of why I got the 1660 graphics card in the first place. So I asked a question on Acer's forum about the graphics, and um, I was wondering if I could update my BIOS to get it to enable the onboard graphics, and Ilzy says that they most likely don't. Um, he knows of only a few laptops that Acer produces that would have that feature, but no desktops that he knows of does. And he's posted a lot and he looks like a trusted member of the forum so I'm gonna take that as an answer hey guys this is the Acer Aspire after we put the 1660 Super in it I ran a benchmark with user benchmarks um, everything's looking pretty good um, I'll go over what we have now um, the gaming percentage is 64 percent desktop 61 percent uh, workstations at 49 percent now so what really got the biggest boost is the gaming by adding this graphics card. And it says it should be able to handle most of the recent games at high resolutions. Um, and we'll be seeing that later when I'm benchmarking games and uh, showing you how many FPS I'm getting with uh, modern titles. The i5 is doing really well. The 1660 Super, I ran the benchmark twice and both times it performed lower than the 20th percentile. Um, that may have to do with the motherboard disabling the Intel onboard graphics. I'm not 100% sure why it's performing so poorly, um, but it's definitely not doing so hot, and I'll get into that later in this video. And then we everything else is looking about the same as when I had benchmarked it the previous times. So we're going to go into some gaming FPS uh, benchmarks now. So for those of you who like GTA 5, we're coming in here, we've got very high settings on most of the settings and high on a few. We're playing a 1080p. Um, this benchmark does pretty well. It stays around 60, but in it can stutter down to 30 frames per second. And that's what we're seeing here. But it'll pick back up to 60. And if you think the frames per second are at 30 or too low, you could always just turn some of the settings down and it will probably do a lot better.
moving along we'll be doing Shadow of the Tomb Raider right now and this one does a lot more frames per second I'm just using the NVIDIA recommended optimized settings and it usually sticks around 70 FPS was the average but there are some pretty high highs and I think the low goes around to 53 Down in the bottom right, we can see a chart outlining the various FPSs that were obtained during this benchmark. Moving along, we're on Doom. This one, for some reason, the frames per second didn't um, capture, but it was doing really well. Um, I think it was around 70 FPS uh, with the NVIDIA recommended settings. I think it looks pretty good. Hey guys, if you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more. Thank you.